Okay, the way we can show this is we can say on the left hand side are all the cadences we've put together so far and we have now labeled them. This is the new full order sort, for example, cadence phrase one. And phrase two. But what we've done over here is put them into a separate score where we can add a backbone. So this is the backbone we added to the first and so those backbones fit to these cadences and this cadence Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Motion Part 11 figures. In today's episode, we set out, we reflected, that we are continuing to work from a structural approach. That is, our putting things together at the moment is still based very much on what mode are we in, what note function are we using, and what chord function. Now, the challenge is, given seven notes, that's it. It's seven notes. How do we come up with stuff that sounds cool? That is the challenge. And, and these are the seven notes right here. Seven notes. So the short answer is that we have a toolbox of methods. We have a recipe box of methods. We have the experience of all this. We have pure random, pull it out of the air, cherry picking. We have, which is frankly part of our toolbox. So what we're recognizing is we're still kind of using what we call a structural functional approach. Now that all said, being organized, we decided, do we need to label all these cadences that we identified in the last few streams? And the short answer is yes. That's why this says, you know, new full order one, new full order two, and everything, root order one, root order three, et cetera, root order two. And that gives us an audit trail to move from um, the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And every time we make a new score and start, you know, kind of getting down to brass tacks with an actual thematic composition, we know where did it come from structurally. And then, as typically happens, all heck breaks loose and we're composing freely. But we've got a good sound structure to work with. So our rule is called the rule of cool. Keep an ear out for what sounds cool. Um, so what we did today is we kept working with that different sort order score, this thing here, and we identified and labeled uh, 56 phrases. Each one, there's 56 of these things. Then we made a, um, a second score of backbones and identified 56 backbones to go with the 56 cadence phrases. Then, then we said now, and here they are, here's all 56. You can see 56 right there, 56, count them. 12 from the new full order, 11 from the interval pair order, etc., etc., etc. And we said, well, uh, we wanted to identify uh, unique, are these all different? or are some of them the same? And the short answer is some of them are repeated, like C, A flat, A flat, which sounds like C, A flat, A flat. Is used three times. However, C, C, A flat is used once. C, G flat, G flat. Now, you can already hear a melody out of this. It's good. So we have some cool sounding, simple three note motifs to work with. I say, well, so what? Why do we go through all this trauma to get there? Well, if you have seven notes, there's seven times seven times seven, which is blah, 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 about almost 7 to 49, was that 50 times 7? That's 350 possible, possible 
motifs we could have come up with, and we've narrowed it down to 56, or actually less than 56, something like, I don't know, 30 or so. And then they sound cool. Like here's a B flat, A flat, B flat. That's just a. Or B flat, A flat, G flat. And. Like that. That was B flat, A flat, B flat. And they all have very cool cadences to go with them. For example, if we wanted to look at number, God only knows, the BAD cadence, 14 IPO, it's way, way, way down here. I don't know, we'll just pick one out here. D, D, G flat, G flat, C. Okay, is that any? D, G flat. Da, 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 da. And the chords we have to go with it, however, are which gives it, again, that whole rich texture flavor. And we were kind of demonstrating that in the previous stream by just kind of randomly pulling some chords out and putting a back button against them. So we did that. So what we're going to do is play a few of these for you. We also made a piano kit, but more on that later. Play a few of these uh, combo backbones for you. I think the most interesting ones, some of the most interesting ones, come out of the interval pair order, what we call IPO. Uh, where's IPO? Here's some. So we'll play. We'll play this subset. There's about IPOs have eleven. We'll play these eleven motifs and chords for you. Here we go. And what we like about this so much is you can hear in the IPO order, it's in order of increasing consonants overall. And you get some of those really nice spooky, spooky, well, we call them spooky, spooky sounding chords. So that, that, that alone is a, is a nice sequence you could use for a mood in your thematic piece. So that concludes today's stream. Our ideas for next time are to continue to explore the figures, um, figure out how to name. We have 12 common repeated figures and 25 unique. So if we're going to make a new motif standalone score, which is the next idea, we need to label them somehow so we know where did they come from. Um, we also have the idea for compressing and expanding the motifs and adding gamakas, which are ornamentations, and then uh, just go back to our 3db piano kit, which gives us an even further way to explore figures. So uh, shout outs to Symposa for stopping by, Miss Cleo for stopping by. Tune in next time to see what happens next. Do take care, do come back, and do keep on streaming.